Good afternoon everyone and welcome to this Get On Course for Zero Waste webinar. Firstly, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tim Lynham. I'm the manager responsible for On Course for Zero Waste. I, I'm joined this afternoon by my colleague Catherine Warren. I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Catherine Warren and I'm one of RAP's business resource efficiency experts. Okay. Um, what we're going to do in the next hour is to give you a short presentation which overviews the course. I will then run through an online tour and then there will be opportunities for questions. Just so you know how to submit questions, you can do that at any time throughout the whole webinar. And what I'm putting up on screen is the, uh, the guide to do that. So if you've got your panel minimized, if you click on that uh, little orange button, then you'll get an expanded window. And in that window, there'll be a little panel with questions where you can type in a question at any point and that will pop into the pile of questions that we can then come back to and go through at the end of the webinar. First off, I thought I'd just do a, a quick few uh, seconds about RAP. RAP is a, an organization that has a vision of a world where resources are used sustainably. We help businesses, individuals and communities to reap the benefits from reducing waste, acting more sustainably to produce more sustainable products and using resources in a more efficient way. Okay, what we're going to do next is just to uh, do a quick poll. Uh, the aim of the poll is just to get an idea of why you're here today and uh, what is your main driver for uh, potentially getting involved in uh, this online course. So what you'll see in a second is a poll will pop up on screen. You'll have an opportunity to check one of the options uh, and then we'll give you about 15 seconds and then we'll see what you're all here for today. Okay, as you're still voting, I'll give you a few more seconds. Okay, we'll cut it off now and let's see where we are. So, 60% uh, of you are here to improve your company operations and save money for your business. Well, that's good because that's the main focus of On Course for Zero Waste. It's all about saving money. Okay, so just to overview the agenda for today, um, as I said earlier, there's going to be a, an initial presentation that's going to cover the benefits to you as individuals, but also uh, to your businesses and organizations. We're going to do an overview of the different courses and the support available. Um, Catherine's going to do a bit of an introduction to waste prevention planning. And after that, uh, we'll have a short tour of the course. I'll take you inside the course and walk you through bits of it to show you how it works, what's in there, what resources are available that you can use for yourself or for your business. And at the end, we'll have time for questions. And as I said earlier, um, you can submit those questions at any time and then they'll be waiting for us at the end. So in terms of On Course for Zero Waste, just to, to start off with, to give you a quick overview, First things to stress, it's free to register and free to use. No payment, no requirements, anything to do there. All you need to do is go to the, uh, the website, the hyperlink on screen, um, register, which I'll, get, I'll show you later on, uh, and then you get instant access to the material and to the courses. There are two courses. One designed for people who are new to resource efficiency uh, and another which is more designed for those individuals who have some experience, have implemented some actions in their organizations. 
Each has four modules each. The foundation course is for those who are beginning their journey, whereas the practitioner course is for those who have more experience. To support the course, there are six publications. These cover different topics and are aligned to the two courses. There are also a whole series of templates and tools, and I'll show you some of these later. And there is free support available via either the main RAP helpline or via our dedicated email account. So how do you benefit? Well, as individuals, the course enables you to enhance your CV. If you're a member of the Chartered Institute of Waste Management, there are CPD credits for completing both of the courses. Um, and the course also gives you the skills to save your organization money, and that can be up to as much as £1,000 per employee. You also get course certificates and access to expert support to create your own waste prevention plan. At this point, I'm going to hand over to Catherine, and she's going to talk to you about the foundation course, what's in it, and then we'll go on to waste prevention planning and the practitioner course. Okay, thanks, Tim. Well, as Tim has, has mentioned, there are two different on-course for zero waste uh, courses, starting with the foundation level. There's four modules at foundation level, um, and the overall aim of, of the module is to give you the knowledge and the skills that you need to help understand why resource efficiency is an increasingly important issue, how to identify where waste is generated in your business, and how to measure and monitor that waste, how to plan and prioritize your improvements, and how to get support from management and staff to implement your waste prevention plan. So every module takes around 30 to 40 minutes to complete. So you should be able to complete the whole of the foundation course in around about three hours. Although, of course, you, you don't have to do them all in one go. You can fit them in around your working day as suits in a lunch hour or before or, or after work or perhaps even on the weekend. They're a really good starting point if either you're starting completely from scratch or if you're new to resource efficiency and also if you already have some knowledge and experience but would like to learn a bit more. And every module uh, stands alone, but ultimately they do link together, and completing all of them will enable you to create a, a waste prevention plan that's bespoke to your organization. And I'll come back to the waste prevention plan in a little while. First of all, the modules, module one is all about waste mapping, and will take you through a four-stage process to give you a good understanding of how to identify how waste is managed in your business and help you build a baseline on which to, to build a resource efficiency program. The second module is all about uh, measuring and monitoring and will guide you through the process of, of perhaps why and how you need to measure and monitor your waste and use of resources. And the module looks at things like data collection and best practice methods for going forward on how you can analyze your data in order to learn what it shows you about your current performance. I think it's important to stress here, measuring and monitoring your waste is absolutely vital if you are going to go forward and implement a waste prevention plan, as you will need to measure any progress that you make against a baseline from where you started. So one company that we have worked with has done exactly that, and by setting a baseline, they've managed to establish key performance indicators relating to productivity. They've tracked their progress, and they've been able to report savings of around £30,000 per year and diverted around 12 tons of waste from landfill. So the third module is all about taking action and how to develop a plan to implement the actions you've identified. And the module includes useful tools and techniques for getting to the root of the problem, identifying root causes of your waste. And it starts to build this module towards creating that waste prevention plan by highlighting some of the common opportunities from our experience that you might be able to apply in your business. And then finally, the last module is all about gaining the support that you'll need to implement your plan. I think it's all very well having a really good waste prevention plan, but you really will need the support of quite a wide range of people in order to deliver it and make it work 
for example, your colleagues and senior management, waste contractors and service providers, all of whom will play a role and you'll need to have on board to implement a successful waste prevention plan. Okay, so I've talked about the waste, waste prevention plan, so, so what is it? As you've heard, uh, you'll do the first four modules at foundation level, and the idea is that these give you the knowledge and tools that you need to develop your own plan. The on-course for zero waste tool includes a template which you can use to develop the plan, or of course you would be free to develop your own, or, or you might already have um, a, a template or a plan you've already started to put together. One of the resources in the tool or in the course is um, an exemplar plan, so you can see um, some ideas of how other organisations have put together a plan. And whilst you need to tailor it to your own organisation, there are six, some examples of what that might include. So, for example, the results of any waste mapping exercises that you might undertake, process maps, uh, details of your monitoring and recording, what the all-important actions and targets are, and who is responsible for these. Okay. All right, so we're just going to do a quick, another quick poll here, just to get a flavour, really, of, of those of you on the line. Quick question, have you produced a waste prevention plan before? Have you already got something that you're working on? So if you can just give you 10 or 15 seconds, choose yes or no. Okay. Right, we'll just share that information with you, see what the results are. Okay, so about two-thirds and a third roughly. We've got 70, well, nearly 70 percent of you haven't put together a waste prevention plan, and that's great because this is what the on-course for zero waste uh, course will help you do. Um, but also good to see that 31 percent of you already have a plan in, in place. So moving on. Just to summarise before I go into a little bit more detail and give you some example waste prevention plan actions, to summarise what comes out of the, the modules at foundation level, module one, module one will help you identify where and what are your waste streams. Module two will help you identify exactly how much waste you're producing and, and what's in that waste. Module three provides guidance on what you can do to reduce that waste. And module four is all about how you can make it happen. So, moving on to the next slide, this is just some examples, really, of the actions that you might take to get started. This is a very simple action plan, which highlights some of the first steps that you might take. For example, the first action on here might be to produce a waste map for your organisation. And to do this, you might need to think about what risks and challenges that you might come up against while you do this. For example, who are the staff that you need to engage with? and what access to data will you need. Following on from this, another step might be then to carry out a waste composition analysis to get sort of to the root of what your waste streams consist of. And again, there may be challenges to consider. For example, you might need to think carefully about how you will get samples of waste that are representative of day-to-day -day operations. You might need to think about some of the equipment that you might need to do the waste composition analysis. And also, don't forget to hear about the stakeholders and, and who you will need to help you. It could be that you need to segregate waste or put it to one side for a number of days, and so the necessary staff need to be aware when you plan to do this. A further action to get you started might be to produce waste flow charts for the different departments in your business to identify hotspots or which processes are producing which types of waste. And so the four foundation modules will give you the tools and guidance to help with all of these types of activities. And the aim of this is to then move on and develop a more detailed waste prevention plan. And this slide here um, just gives you an overview of the types of things that a business might include in that plan. So some examples here. Um, really, the waste prevention plan is all about identifying what the actions are, the risks and challenges um, in implementing that action, what preparation you might need to do first, who are the stakeholders, and importantly, what is the target um, that you want to achieve. So the first action here that somebody had in, in one organization was that they wanted to remove the general waste bins from, from individual desks. This could be a bit of a challenge. Some employees might see this as an inconvenience. 
So preparation here is key. Uh, identify who the stakeholders are that you need to engage with to make this happen. For example, getting management on board, communicating clearly to staff as to the reasons behind doing this. And then this particular action had a target of making a 30% reduction in general waste by January 2013. So just go through one more of these, which was an action to segregate food waste produced in a, in a kitchen or a canteen. The challenge here, perhaps, is staff don't see it as their responsibility. And so again, when you're preparing to implement this action, you need to make sure that you have all of the stakeholders on board and you need to have clear communications in place. You're also going to need some equipment for this, so you're going to need bins or containers. And you also obviously need to find an outlet uh, from your waste management contractor that can take food waste away for composting or anaerobic digestion if, if you've got a service available to you. So that's a preparation that you need to do. And the target here was to remove food waste from the general waste stream by January 2014. So after you've hopefully created your waste prevention plan, those of you who haven't already done so, the next step, and you need to do this in order to get your certificate for the course, is to send us your waste prevention plan. And you're not on your own. We have a team of experts who will review your plans and provide feedback to you. And just some of the feedback that we've had so far from the waste prevention plans we've reviewed as part of this uh, project. We've had some very comprehensive waste mapping plans that perhaps um, would benefit from a little bit more detail on waste composition in order to target particular waste streams. Uh, another point we've had is perhaps more financial data is beneficial, understanding the cost of raw materials as well as the cost of disposal because that really helps identify priority areas on, on which to focus on. And benchmarking, I think we've had some great waste prevention plans but unless you've got that benchmarking at the start, it's, um, it's difficult to sort of measure your progress and you need to, to be able to relate that to a unit of production or, or another output. So I'm going to hand you um, back over to Tim now. Oh, before I do, sorry, there's, um, just to summarize on the next level, if you've uh, completed the foundation course, there is a practitioner course. These are four more advanced uh, modules. Module 5 is aimed at resource efficiency and process improvement. So it goes into a little bit more detail about what you can do to use your resources more efficiently by making changes to your processes. Module 6 is all about behavior change. How do you implement and manage change and um, encourage behavior change in your organization? Module 7 is all about how when you've done everything perhaps within your organization, looking outside of that and looking at your supply chain and looking at how you can use sustainable procurement to improve your performance. And then finally, there's a module on environmental management systems for those of you who perhaps don't already have an environmental management system in place. So these uh, practitioner course is designed for those of you who want to go that step further from foundation level and achieve additional savings. So how do you complete the course then? I'll hand back over to Tim just to sort of outline what you need to do to get your certificate. Okay, thank you Catherine. So how do you complete either course? Well in terms of the foundation course what you do is you work through modules one to four the way they are set up is that once you have completed one module, the next module becomes available. So if you complete one, two pops up, complete two, three pops up and so on. That will take you approximately you know, about three hours to complete. I know other people who have done the course so far have done it in less time, but it rather depends on how much in-depth you want to take it. Once you've got to the end of the course, you are presented with a slide which says, uh, please now consider creation of your waste prevention plan and it's the submission of the waste prevention plan which is the point at which the course itself is complete. Once we get the plan, as Catherine mentioned it earlier, we will review it, we'll send you some comments back and the comments will come back by email and attached to the email will come your certificate. In terms of the practitioner course, because we decided that the needs of some of our users would be different, uh, it's set up in a different way. And what happens when you register for 
on Course for Zero Waste is you can either go and start with the foundation course, or if you are more experienced, you can go straight to the practitioner course modules. And all four of the practitioner course modules are unlocked at the point of registration. In order to complete the course, you basically work through three out of the four modules. And we have a, an admin system that tracks user progress in the background. So we will know when you've done three out of the four. Once you've done that, um, we will then uh, review our information and send you the appropriate certificate. So the course certificates, as I say, are sent out on completion of the course. Each uh, equates to four hours of CIWM CPD. So the foundation has four hours worth of CPD and the practitioner has four hours. So I mentioned earlier about extra resources, and I'll show you these when uh, we do the tour of the course. But basically, inside and available to download and use at your leisure are a series of different resources. They're either links to other relevant or useful information, um, and that could be other RAP tools, that could be other RAP publications, that could be resources from other UK government agencies, but it's a whole series of useful information that can be relevant to your organisation in, in, in certain circumstances. Then there is something called the tools and templates. These are elements um, that back up the material you see online. So when Catherine was talking about the waste prevention plan, she mentioned that there is an exemplar and a template that you can use. And those are examples. And I will show you another example um, later on. But there are other things such as blank waste um, maps. There are various Word documents, Excel documents. There's a whole series of different resources there that you can use or not use. It's entirely up to you. To add on top of all of those, there are six course guides aligned to both the foundation and the practitioner courses. These are PDFs which you can download. Um, they go into the course material in a bit more depth. They provide yet more links to other information. And just an example, I've got one showing on screen, which is the resource efficiency and process improvement guide, um, which is one of the guides aligned to the course. One other thing you can get is um, there are PDFs of all of the online slides that you see. Um, so if you want to go back and refer to something where you've gone through the slides online, you can do that at any point by going back into the course, going to the right part of the course and downloading the PDF, or you can do that at the point at which you complete that element of the course. All of these we try and keep up to date through regular review. So as websites change or information changes, we will put those changes back into the, the course material and into the guides and they're, they're in a, a regular refresh cycle. Okay, just one more thing before I um, do the online tour. Um, we will be running two free workshops in the near future. Um, these have the title On Course for Zero Waste Live. They're designed for registered users who perhaps would prefer to do the course in uh, a more typical training environment. So we're running it effectively as a day workshop that takes you through the course, through modules one, two, three, and four of foundation, enables you to get to the point of creating your plan, so effectively takes you to the point of completion of the, the foundation course in a workshop session. That doesn't mean to say that um, the online materials would be barred from you. Obviously, they would still be there, and you could go back and refer to all of that material online at any point. Now, we are aiming to run the first one in a little under a month's time. Um, uh, 
uh, at a venue in the Paddington area of London. Um, and the second one will be run in February for uh, registered users in, in, in the north. Uh, we'll probably be running it in Manchester, but that's to be confirmed at a later date. Anyone's interested in either of those sessions, uh, we will be sending out um, invites to registered users very soon, but in advance, anyone can email us at the support email account, which is shown on screen there. So finally, just to summarize, um, On Course for Zero Waste gives you the ability to gain new skills, improve your CV, and get CPD credits through short 30 to 40 minute modules. These new skills will give you the ability to save your business up to a thousand pounds per employee. But we're here to help and support you through the courses at any time. So if you've got any queries at any point, you can always telephone the 0808 number, which is the main RAP um, support number. Uh, but if you've got something you want to put down on an email, you can always send that to us at OC fzw-support at ricardo-aea.com, which is again shown on screen. And we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Right, so at this point I'm going to do uh, a short tour. So I will just swap from uh, this presentation over to... course. I'll just take you out for a second. Okay, so if you go to the link that we showed you early on, and I'll have it on the screen later on, you will arrive at this page. This page gives you a bit of general information, a bit of the overview about the course, and to the bottom of the page, are the contact details I just put on screen. So if you ever forget where they are, they're always on the front page before you log in. There's also available course brochure. So if anyone wants a bit more information uh, and is not quite sure whether it's quite for them, uh, but wants to uh, get a bit more information before committing, there is this brochure which you can download. This is, this is what the PDF looks like. Um, it gives you some overview on the benefits. It will take you through the overview details of the foundation level certificate, what you need to do to complete, the practitioner level one, which is basically what, I've, what we've been going through um, in the last few minutes. It will then give you a bit more detail on each of the course modules under foundation. Talk a little bit at the bottom about the waste prevention plan. Talks about the CIWM CPD, and then something similar for the practitioner level course. So if any of your colleagues might be interested, you can always share this with them, uh, and then they can have the information to see whether it's uh, of relevance to them. So I'll take you back now to the front end of the, uh, the site. I'm now going to log in using a test account, which I've used to illustrate progress through the course, but also navigation. So when you come in, you are presented with some information, and it tells you down at the bottom of the screen how to do things and how to navigate around. But I'll just illustrate how it works. On your right-hand side, under training progress, are the modules of the various courses and the course and the foundation. These are, when I said unlocked, when you come in, all five are unlocked. So at any point, once you've registered, you can go to foundation and start the course, go to module five, go to module six. All you need to do is just click on it. Once you click on it, it will detect where you were in the course the last time you were in. So what this is showing is that I've completed 
module one and I'm at the start of module two. However, if you want to go back and review earlier parts of the course, you can see that there's this thing called module progress, which I've just shown you on screen on the right hand side. This is showing you by the color coding, green means complete, uh, orange means you're just about to start, that I've completed the introduction bit and the waste mapping. But if I want to go back at any point, I could always go back just by clicking on it and then I can go back to the introduction and I can go through those slides again or I can go and download the material and I'll do exactly that. I'll just show you how that happens. So I'm back at the beginning of the foundation course. To navigate forwards and backwards, all you do is click on the uh, the arrows, it goes forwards, something goes backwards, and if you want to go back to home, you press that. I mentioned earlier that there's PDFs of all of these slides that you see, which you can then download. And to do that, you go to Tools and Templates, and there we are, sitting there, is the Course Introduction PDF, which would be the slides for the introduction part of the course. If I went to Module 1, which I've also completed, you can do something similar. So there's Module 1, and that's the PDF for that part of the course. But you can also see here, we've now got other information and resources. So there's a waste flow template, there's a site layout waste diagram, these are resources which you can use, download and use it, use it at leisure, but are aligned to this bit of the course. So as this is about waste map, mapping, they relate to the waste mapping part. So it's a template which you can then use to show where your the waste is on a site. As you progress through the course, once you complete the end of a, uh, of a module, the next one becomes available. The same thing happens in Practitioner, but it works in a slightly different way. In Practitioner, what happens, and I'll just take you to Module 5 as an example, is that you get stages. So in Foundation, the modules unlock from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. In Practitioner, it will unlock the next stage as you complete the previous stage. So at the moment I'm on the introduction. If I go through the introduction, imagining we've got to the end of the introduction, and you'll see at the bottom there's a little button there which says start next stage, and now I'm now into stage one. And basically that's how it, it all works. You can go back to anything you've done before at any time. Uh, if you get confused or if you need some assistance or if for any reason uh, your system isn't working, just contact us on the support account. And to do that, you go to my account if you, and there's a contact us page, which again tells you all the information if you've forgotten that it was on the front page, the front screen as well. So, one other thing that I was just going to illustrate is that inside the course, as you go through, you get information. Uh, some of that information will be related to additional resources. Some of that might point you at other information. Um, and in this one, we're back in the foundation now in Module 2. At this part of the course, we're talking about measuring and monitoring, and here are some links to other resources that might be of value. There are some water-related uh, information there from Welsh Water and from Ofwat, uh, which will then take you to something that's relevant to this part of the course. That one, as you'll see from the pop-up, is the guide that is related to measuring and monitoring. 
So that's the PDF, the guide that you could download. If I click on that, that will just pop up or it will download um, if you're using Chrome into the download section at the bottom. So let's try that. There you go. There's the there's the guide for measuring. Uh, each one is about 30 pages long. Um, they're set up with tabs to jump you through if you want to go to certain sections. Um, and it contains lots of relevant and useful information which you might find helpful as you progress through the course. As before, these are all free to download and use and we keep them up to date. The other thing that is built into the course are some relevant and useful case study examples. This is one from Ginsner's pasty making company in Cornwall. Uh, gives you a little case study on what that business achieved through an effective program of measuring and monitoring. These text-based case studies are, are dotted through the course, but there's also some um, video case studies which you can get from Module 5. If I can remember the... which I can. The part of the course. If you go through Module 5, you get five, sorry, four video case studies related to different parts of the waste hierarchy. One related to prevention, one pre related to preparing for reuse, another for recycling, and another for other recovery. And if I click that, what should happen is a little video case study will pop up on screen. A business will then talk about what they've done and what they've achieved. So hopefully these are useful illustrations of how undertaking the course, doing the actions and creating your waste prevention plan will help you and help your business save money. Right, so I think that's probably enough on, on the tour, but one last thing before I, I go, and probably I should have done it at the beginning, is how do you register? How do you create your account? Well, it's very simple. If I log myself back out, there is a button there which says create your free training account. There's also a link down here which says create your free training account. If you click on it, there is a simple registration screen. It asks you for some information, um, a username, email address, your passwords, details of your organization, contact details. You fill it in, click on the create new account button at the bottom and you've got instant access. That's all there is to it. Okay, well I think that's probably enough and time for some questions. So let's see where we are. Okay, just as a reminder, just a reminder on how to submit questions. And let's have a look, what have we got? Okay, we've got one question um, that's asked, uh, can more than one person in a company complete um, the, the course, the training, and, and the answer to that is yes, there's no limits, um, and in fact we've found some organisations really benefit from getting their entire green team to do it, or the head of each section or department to do it, so everyone um, is completing the course. I think one, one thing to point out is if you are going to put together a waste prevention plan, then obviously work with each other if you have got more um, than one of you doing the course, obviously you only want one waste prevention plan for your organisation, so to use that as an opportunity to work together to develop the plan. 
Okay, there's a, we have a couple of questions. Uh, will, the, will a copy of the presentation be made available later? Yes, it will. We're actually recording the webinar, so we'll be putting that up on a, uh, on a site, and we'll be sending you the link. Okay, we had another question about um, what do some of the publications cover. Um, Tim, do you want to pick sure. up on that one? Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's basically six publications. Uh, four of those are aligned to the practitioner modules, one for each, basically. So there's one on resource efficiency and process improvement. Uh, there's one on um, what's entitled environmental improvement. That's all around behavior change. There's another one on supply chain management, and then the final one on environmental management systems, which means there's two that are aligned to the foundation course. The measuring to manage resources one, which I showed you on the screen, and there's another one called, uh, if I remember right, waste minimization. Okay, we've, we've been asked, um, is it possible to look at waste prevention plans from other comparative uh, industries? Um, within the, the course, um, there are some examples and, and sort of ideas that are in waste prevention plans, but we don't have any, obviously every, every plan is, is sort of confidential and bespoke to that organisation, so we wouldn't be able to, to share other plans, but I think that you'll find within the training enough guidance um, and support to develop your own plan. Um, so I hope, hope that answers that question, but we can't share plans from, from other organisations. Someone asked uh, whether the, work, the London workshop will be repeated at any point next year. Uh, it may be, but we're in the process of um, planning for the next financial year um, now, so I can't really commit, but it's, uh, it's a possibility, that's all I can say. Um, I think a couple of people have asked around the CPD and does it uh, apply to other organisations? No, it's, it's a CIWM accredited course, so it only counts towards their CPD, so I'm afraid no to IEMA. Um, but I think someone asked also about, you know, can the certificate um, be used as a record for the individual? Well, yes, it can. The, um, the certificates are actually issued to the individual. They're not issued to organisations. So um, it's, uh, it will be a, a certificate from RAP to you um, and indicating you've completed that course. Okay, there's another question. Um, is the course available for environmental consultants who perhaps advise others on, on waste prevention? The course is open to everyone. It, it is targeted at SMEs, but there's nothing to stop anybody completing the course. But you would need to complete the four modules and submit a waste prevention plan if you did want the certificate. Um, and another question that, that somebody's um, asked is, is it suitable for local authorities? Again, whilst it has been developed and is targeted at SME organisations, again, there's nothing to stop a local authority or particular department of a local authority completing the course and benefiting um, by implementing waste prevention measures within their, their own department in the authority. Um, somebody asked, can they just do a module in behaviour change and others maybe later? Of course, you can go straight into the practitioner level if you think that that's appropriate and then go back at a later date if you did want to do some refresher training or do some of the other modules. Someone's also asked whether they could do all four practitioner modules. You can do whatever you like. You know, <laughs> If you want to do all four, yeah, absolutely. Um, that might be relevant to you. It's just we decided... Um, and agreed with CIWM that for award of the CPD points for practitioner, it may not have been relevant for an individual to do all four. So we basically agreed with them that three out of the four was the level that um, was required. But we have we've got users who've completed four, um, so that's no issue. 
got an interesting question here from a company, a construction company who work across various sites. So waste prevention plan will vary, uh, sorry, waste production will vary. And the question is, should they include their clients' waste into their own for benchmarking? Well, I guess that does sort of demonstrate really the need for benchmarking. You would need something um, to compare. If you're in charge of the client's waste as part of your work on that construction site um, and what you do and how you manage that waste, you'd have to link that back to perhaps the size um, of the construction, the value of the construction, or perhaps square meters if it's a building. You'd have to find something really to use um, between your different sites so that you'd be able to sort of then compare um, and identify any improvements that you've been able to make. Someone's asked whether a physical output is required to complete the practitioner course in a similar manner to the waste prevention plan from the foundation. No, it's not. Um, all, all that you are required to do is to basically work through the course material online. Um, as I indicated earlier, we've got, a, we've got an administration system which basically tells us where you are. So once we know that you've been through three out of the four, um, we will drop you an email saying um, congratulations on completing the practitioner course and we will send you your certificate. However, if you're new to uh, this area and you haven't done any waste prevention planning before, I would strongly recommend you start with um, the foundation course and go through modules one to four or else you might find that the material in five, six, seven and eight in the practitioner course is, is a little too advanced. Someone's asked um, how long will the course be available for. Tim, are you able to, to clarify? Um, as far as we are aware, the course will continue at least until the end of March. However, it's highly likely that it will be available from April onwards. Um, but as with all of these things where funding is provided by government. We need to go through a cycle and confirm that. We should know more um, early in the new year um, about plans, but most of the online tools are expected to continue uh, for a period of time and have a life. The, this course is actually accredited by CIWM for three years, so it's highly likely that, that, that um, the course will be available for an extended period. And just to add to that, really, there's, there's no time like the present. We, we hope you all um, come off the call and unregister and get started on the course if you haven't already done so. Um, I think the sooner you start, the sooner you can start saving your organization money by helping them prevent waste. So sooner the better. Um, we've had a question about support working towards ISO 14001. Yep, that's the, the last module of the practitioner level. It's all about environmental management systems. So if you don't already have an EMS in place or you're working towards 14001, then I suggest that that module would be um, very helpful to you. Um, just go on, sorry. Someone's asked, is there a time limit for the course? No, it's, you know, it's as long as it's available on the, on the, the website, um, you can work through it. It's not like you're, you, 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 know, you need to do it in, you know, two weeks or five days. Uh, it's not designed that way. It's designed for open access and for people to fit it around their working patterns and their, their time commitments. Um, so no, it's, it's, it's got no time limit. Another question we've had is on um, are there benchmark figures on the course for individual types of industries, for example, hotels? Not really. Um, the course helps you benchmark your current performance um, in order to, to measure improvements. So, so that's the idea of that. But there are other resources available on the RAP website and sort of case studies and, and publications which might be relevant to your industry that, that would help you with that. But the course is sort of mainly targeted at helping you set your benchmark to measure improvements going forward. Someone's actually asking about can, can they submit a case study report. Um, I suppose it rather depends on what you mean by that. Um, but RAP uh, does publish a, a, a number of case studies on, on the activities of business. Um, we're always interested to hear from companies that are willing to share 
their information with the wider community. So if you'd like to drop us an email, contact me, uh, please do so, and perhaps we can discuss that further. I had a question, uh, again, from a construction company asking, do site waste management plans fit into the overall waste prevention plan for the company? Well, I would say, yes, they would, um, and a sort of an aim really would be for you to have an overarching waste prevention plan for your organisation, and as part of that plan would be um, how you're going to implement site waste management plans, who's responsible for producing them, um, what are the targets, um, so again, are you going to set a certain percentage that you'd like to reduce certain waste to landfill for each site that you work on. So I would very much see them as being linked. Um, individual site waste management plans could be linked to your overall, overall waste prevention plan. Someone's asking, I think, when we might be doing an, uh, another webinar. Well, we haven't got any more plans for the foreseeable future because um, this is uh, the third that we've done. Um, the uh, the focus next is on our, our, our two workshops, however, it's probable that we'll be doing something similar again once the new financial year arrives, um, but again, as I mentioned earlier, because this is government-funded activity, um, we're going through the planning cycle at the moment, so I can't commit to anything. I've had a question from someone who works for an oil spill response company. Uh, and there is a growing requirement for waste management plans, and would the course help with that? Um, I don't think so in that context. Um, the sort of aim, really, of the whole course is preventing waste um, in terms of pr uh, reducing the amount of waste that is, is created by a company and using resources more efficiently. So it's not really looking at individual, um, perhaps, incidents um, and what you would need to do with an oil spill. So I don't think it's relevant, but it could be relevant to other parts of your business and how your business operates. Okay, we have a, a, another question, which is, um, what do I get sent when I register? Well, actually, what you do is you get an automated email. Um, it's just really there to remind you where the, um, where the, where the, where the site is. So it gives you the URL, the web address. Uh, it also gives you a reminder of your password. Um, if you want to change your password once you've received that email, you just log back in uh, and you've got the ability to change it at any point. The one thing that I should note is that we have had a little issue with certain internet service providers and certain platforms. So if you don't get that email, for whatever reason, and it is a rare occasion, but it has happened, um, please contact us um, and we can um, send you the, the relevant information if you need it. Okay, well, I, I think we've asked all of the questions, answered all the questions, rather. Um, so if no one's got anything else at this point, I think we'll draw this to a close. Um, as I said earlier, we are recording. We will be posting um, a link to the material. Just as a final reminder, though, just to put on screen right at the end, we're going to show you the, uh, the URLs again for the where you go to log on and register. Um, there's two. One takes you directly to the, the main page, which is the first one, which is the one I showed you earlier. The other one is uh, a, an information page, which is on the main RAP website, which then links you through to the tool. Okay, well, thank you again for attending, and uh, I hope to uh, see you online soon and uh, have some waste prevention plans being submitted. Thank you very much.